speaker is uh, an Afghan activist. She came to London in 1998. She's a writer, she's written uh, inspirationally on her experiences in Afghan and Afghanistan, and we're very happy to have her here. Please give a warm welcome to Mitra Kayyum. Thank you. Afghanistan. 
and by the rehabilitation of the country through education and humanitarian aid. It is time that the U.S. and its NATO allies realize that bombing Afghan women will not liberate them. What would you choose to liberate you? A gun pointing on your head, or education, the rule of law, or justice? Poverty is increasing because more and more Afghans flee their hometowns due to increased airstrikes on their homes and on, the, on their children. Due to having their homes raided every night, or because their homes and farms have been destroyed, they've been left with nothing and are forced to move to Kabul with, where they live in refugee camps and back on the streets to feed their families. I met refugees from Helmand, Paktio, Kapisa and Farah provinces when I visited one of the many refugee camps in Kabul. I spoke with them and asked them what they thought about this war and whether or not they believed NATO was winning this war. The reply I got was, this war has destroyed our homes and our lives, is killing our children, destroying our country and our people. The US and NATO war is a war for power and resources. This war started with a lie, and any war that starts with a lie will never be won. They are losing this war every day. There is a huge increase in mental health issues. The, the effects of decades of war, including the 11 years occupation by the US and NATO, has left Afghan men, women and children with mental illnesses including anxiety, depression, suicide and post-traumatic stress disorders. Drug addiction has also increased in the last 11 years under the watchful eye of NATO and many Afghans suffering from mental illnesses turn to self-medication and in most cases to heroin or opium. War trauma has been found to be the key factor for the 1 million Afghans with drug problems. This includes men, women and children as young as 9 years old. We often talk about the effects of war on men and women but we forget children who are the most vulnerable victims of war. A recent report has found that 80% of all children felt frightened, sad and unable to cope and 90% believe they will die in the war. Today Afghanistan is one of the poorest countries in the world. Despite of being rich in natural resources, where most children don't live long enough to see their fifth birthday. But it is in the eyes of these children that I saw hope and if anyone can change Afghanistan it will be these children. This war is killing the children and the future of Afghanistan. It breaks my heart to think what will become of these children when they grow up. Will they become sex slaves, opium brides, or recruited by the Taliban and used as suicide bombers? Afghanistan is also the second most corrupt country in the world today. Millions of dollars of aid have been poured into the country, but where has all that money gone? I can tell you that from what I saw, it does not go to the poor and where it is needed the most. It is the warlords and the criminals who have become rich from all that money. Afghanistan is more unstable today than ever. The Taliban are more stronger than ever. It is the innocent Afghans who have been sandwiched between enemies and paid the highest price of the so-called war on terror. Many people have asked me, do you think there will be a complete withdrawal of troops in 2014? I asked the Afghan people the same question during my visit to Kabul, who have confirmed my answers. They say, the US will never withdraw its troops out of Afghanistan because they have geopolitical and strategic interest in the region. If the US leaves, then other powerful countries like China and Russia will try to take control of the, of the country and its resources, which is something that the US will never allow to happen. The talk about the 2014 withdrawal is to create tension and to make the Afghans think that they're not safe and secure without foreign troops. If the West wanted peace and stability in Afghanistan, they would have achieved this a long time ago. They, they only want relative stability in order to continue this occupation and to maintain military bases in Afghanistan. The Afghan people have had their right to self-determination taken away from them, but given the chance, they're more than capable of running, the, running and rebuilding their own country back together. But with the endemic corruption, decades of interference and the continuing war on terror, it will be a long time before the hands of Western imperialists will let go of the country. But Afghans have never and will never accept domination by foreign invaders. There is a reason why Afghanistan is called the graveyard of empires. I want you to imagine a cycle and at the top of the cycle, I want you to place war and occupation. War and occupation lead into instability, 
poverty, lack of education, corruption, mental health issues, domestic violence and death which can occur at each stage of this cycle. And it is by breaking, it is by eliminating war and occupation from this cycle that we will slowly start to see improvement in all the areas mentioned. For the US and its NATO allies, the well-being of the Afghan people has no value, but it has to us, and that's why we're here today. So let's break this cycle by fighting even harder this year to end this war in occupation and bring the troops home. As Bertolt Brecht once said, those who struggle may fail, but those who don't struggle have already failed. So let's struggle together and fight for a better and peaceful world without wars, even if it means we might fail in the process. Thank you.